All right, guys. It is a cloudy and breezy, a little bit muggy, but otherwise pleasant day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the Point Lonesome Swamp, deep in the oasis of freedom. So we have stumbled into uh, Wednesday, March 9th, 2022. Good Lord. Uh, <laughs> well, guys, you, you knew it had to happen. It, 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 as hard as I've been trying to ignore uh, that little distraction across the pond, uh, obviously, uh, at some point, I had to crack. Uh, you know, guys, it's just the point. I, I think Sandy made the same point uh, on her channel last night. You know, there, there, there's so many people already talking about this. Uh, just let all the other, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyway, we're going just, I mean, there's so many angles of this that we can take. And since it is Wednesday uh, and it is my oil price dot com roundup uh, I'm just gonna relent a little bit and obviously uh, the past couple of weeks has been an absolute celebration for oil investors uh, you know making money off of the collapse of a planet make no mistake about it who's getting rich off of uh, what's going on over there. It is uh, oil investors. I've been telling you for years that if you want to, uh, that, that, that is easy to make money off of the collapse of a planet. But uh, we, we gotta be honest here, guys, what the story is. To 99% of people, even, you know, even the, uh, the anti-war protesters, the anti-fossil fuel people, all of these people uh, on their separate bandwagons, uh, and, and, and I'm up there with them uh, for, for what it means when oil, or not just oil, when the price of a gallon of gas crosses $4.00 heading to five dollars, no telling where it's gonna end. Uh, whether you want to admit it or not, you know in, in, in your little lefty, anti-war, anti-fossil fuel heart, you know damn well uh, what you're freaking out about. And that is the price of a gallon of gas. Uh, everything else goes out the window. Everything goes out the window uh, when you need to pony up uh, more money for a gallon of gasoline and all the other various uh, things going up in price due to uh, the escalating price of fossil fuels. This is a crystal clear example. I mean, can anybody deny one of the takeaways from this? Uh, it, it is the no shit Sherlock uh, contention that this country and this planet uh, is 100% dependent on fossil fuels. Uh, you're not here, you know, all of this other stuff uh, can take a back seat to, to this conclusion uh, that the, the, the tiniest little ripple and the fossil fuel economy can wreak havoc everywhere from your own uh, personal life right on up to the uh, economies of different countries and perhaps the entire globe is getting, we're getting ready to head into a global recession, if not a depression over uh, a, a little bit of ripple in fossil fuels. Uh, the, the fossil fuel soaked global industrial economy is going nowhere. Well, it's going nowhere but down. 
you, you, you know what I'm saying. Uh, the, 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 this is in your face uh, proof uh, how dependent every one of us are from individuals to our entire species uh, on, on fossil fuels. But anyway, uh, good Lord, I, as you can imagine, oilprice.com uh, being one of the leading uh, websites, you know, to follow, well, the price of oil it, it is in complete overdrive. Good God, I could spend hours uh, just going through the articles. So uh, I went through about a dozen of them. I will go over a few headlines at the end, but I have chosen this one. Uh, from oilprice.com uh, as the one that sounds the most sensible to me. Brace for high oil prices, inflation, and an economic slowdown. So the three takeaways before we dive into this. Number one, the global economy had only just begun to recover from the corona panic when Putin decided to invade Ukraine, sending oil prices soaring. Number two, hedge funds and analysts appear very bullish on oil prices. Wow! With predictions varying from $150 oil all the way up to $300 oil. And number three, if things continue as they currently are, the Fed may well be forced to raise rates while going into a recession and consumers will have to brace for more pain. That is the bottom line consumers will have to brace for more pain. So this is uh, written by whoever Irina Slav is. Irina Slav is a writer for oilprice.com with over a decade of experience writing on the oil and gas industry. Take it away, Irina. <clears throat> With Brent crude climbing steadily towards $130 per barrel, fears of an economic slowdown and, e and even a slip into recession have reared their heads among traders, very likely enforced by warnings of food supply troubles because of the war in Ukraine. It seems like everything is going wrong at the same time. Oil prices soared as soon as Russia invaded Ukraine and in what it euphemistically calls a special military operation aimed at demilitarizing its eastern neighbor. Mm -hmm. <coughs> as the conflict escalated, <coughs> and the West began implementing sanctions on Moscow, fears grew over potential action against Russia's oil industry, which, you know, of course, Biden took yesterday, the day this uh, article was going to press. Um, so, fears grew over now certain action against Russia's oil industry, which supplies around 7% of the world's crude and is the biggest exporter of crude oil and oil products taken together. Talks about oil sanctions marked the start of the week and the market response was, wow, a sharper rise in oil prices. So far, nothing surprising. <clears throat> According to data 
about hedge fund buying activity in oil contracts, however, there are fears of a global economic slowdown, <clears throat> and while also <clears throat> unsurprising, <clears throat> this is most unwelcome. Yes. In his weekly column on hedge funds and oil buying, Reuters' John Kemp said that the industry remained very bullish on oil with the ratio of bullish to bearish positions at 7 to 1. This ratio signals that hedge funds are following recent geopolitical events in Europe closely, that, but they will be watching for demand destruction as oil prices remain elevated. I love that term, demand destruction, which we have not seen uh, at this point. <clears throat> All right, for those of us who do not understand this, that oilprice.com explain it to you. <clears throat> and oilprice.com also has a YouTube channel itself. Uh, so this basically the same story is being covered on oilprice.com's YouTube channel if you want to go over there and hear it directly from them. <clears throat> All right. As oil prices rise, eventually they tend to reach a certain point when demand destruction begins either from fuel conservation, as Reuters Kemp noted in his column, or simply because expensive fuels make everything else more expensive and discourage spending. <clears throat> Yet, such a trend would come at a very bad time for world economies. While news about the corona panic all but dried up overnight with the Ukraine invasion, economies are still struggling with that distraction. <clears throat> well, that's my word, not hers. The United States, the world's largest oil consumer as well as producer, <clears throat> booked an inflation rate of 7.5% for January, the highest in almost 40 years, and analysts now expect uh, this to have risen closer to 8% in February. Those figures ought to be coming out pretty soon. <clears throat> Meanwhile, oil, oil is not the only commodity on the rise, wheat prices also hit a record high amid the Russian-Ukraine conflict as both countries are major wheat exporters. Russia, the world's largest exporter of the staple, has been heavily sanctioned in ways that make it a challenge to fill wheat cargoes from that country. The 50% jump in wheat prices since the start of the invasion is making wheat, can you say bread, more unaffordable and food insecurity to add food insecurity to soaring oil prices and a recession looks increasingly likely for many economies, including the planets. Perhaps even worse is the fact that, according to some analysts, this is not the end of the rally for oil. G Giovanni Stalnovo from UBS one of these oil analyst firms, for instance, <coughs> forecasts oil could, 
could stabilize around $125 per barrel, which is pretty much where it is right now, unless the war drags on, <coughs> in which in which case disruption to global supply would persist, pushing oil to $150 per barrel. According to Russia's Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Noviak, if the West sanctions Russian oil exports, as the U.S. did uh, and more and more countries are doing, the price for the commodity, you know, with, with Russia off the market, could reach $300 per barrel. Although this is quite an unlikely scenario, in reality, oil prices do seem to have quite a while left to rise. The way things are going now, $200 per barrel is a clear possibility according to Jeffrey Gandioc from the investment firm Double Line, Double Line. Uh, Gundioc said that oil is on its way to $200 and the Fed may be pressed to raise rates while the country is going into a recession, which he noted has never been done before. Gundiak also said it was time to admit that the U.S. was going into stagflation and the latest increase in gas prices was only the beginning of the pain only the beginning of the pain. Yeah, and uh, good Lord, guys, that was just one. Here's, um, just for a few more, uh, just a few, few more. Yeah, Europe is rushing to overhaul its energy security strategy, I bet. Uh, here is war in Ukraine leads to full scale commodities melt up, which I guess they're talking. Let's just read the takeaways from that one. Crude oil, natural gas, aluminum, nickel, wheat, and a whole host of other commodities have seen extreme price increases in recent weeks. Massive repricing in commodities is causing turmoil in global markets. Uh, Russian oil export flows have so far fallen by at least a third. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> Last week, oil and other commodity prices uh, recorded their biggest weekly gains in years as shuttering of Ukrainian ports, sanctions against Russia, and disruption in Libyan oil production sent energy, crop, and metals buyers scrambling for replacement supplies. Russia is one of the world's biggest exporters of key raw materials from crude oil and gas to wheat and, alu and aluminum and the possible exclusion of supplies from the country due to sanctions has sent traders and importers into a frenzy. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, what else? Uh, nothing but bullish news as oil prices soar. And of course, we're hearing this one. Uh, the you know the, the those right wingers are screaming this one, canceling Keystone XL may have been Biden's biggest blunder. 
How about the very real risk of Russian cyber attacks on the West energy infrastructure? All right. The rise in oil prices prompts private shale firms to open the taps. How about big oil's sudden decision to exit Russia comes at a high price? Do you think so? Uh, here is Saudi Arabia significantly raises crude prices. Here is analysts warn of $150 oil if the West bans Russian crude. Uh, here is shale CEU, CEOs meet with U.S. officials amid surging oil prices. <clears throat> EIA hikes their oil price forecast to $185 this year. Uh, here is Kazakhstan bracing for economic fallout from war in Ukraine. Um, here is EU plans a potentially massive bond sale to finance energy and defense. Uh, and of course Putin signs decree to ban exports of raw materials and commodities. Uh, this one is hot off the press. Uh, <clears throat> Russian President Vladimir Putin has signed a decree that institutes special economic measures that will be in effect until the end of this year. Uh, those measures will include a ban or restriction on exports outside of Russia. <coughs> the list of products, <coughs> commodities, <coughs> and raw materials will be determined later by the Russian government. And there you go. As the rain begins to fall on the tin roof, this tin roof coming down on Sunday, as the storm clouds gather, The pain has just begun, and I uh, heartily encourage you to get out there and enjoy it while you still can before the pain really kicks in. Uh, oh shit, I gotta go bring in my lawn chair. Bye guys. Damn it, dog, I knew I was supposed to bring that chair in this morning. Why didn't you tell me to bring in that chair?